for someone to give up there today for our tomorrows, that should never ever be forgotten. My Forgotten Heroes are quite personal to me. When I was uh, a young lad, about 13, my aunt died and all her family were clearly devastated. There was uh, four children. On the day of the funeral, the eldest boy was early 20s. Because her husband was so devastated and couldn't handle it, he stepped up and took charge of the whole day. And for a young man of, uh, of 20 who's just lost his mum, to have done so. I saw him on the day and I think, that's who I want to be. You know, that's strong. And I think it might have driven me to join the, join the forces, but I think that strength of character, and anyone can display that at any time, but he did it on that day and uh, yeah, he's mine. My forgotten hero is something that I've taken back from about three or four years ago. I was at Sheffield, the Remembrance Sunday Day Parade there, and there was a gentleman who was obviously a veteran, but he was, was in the crowd. He, he, di he didn't march in with the veterans, he was by himself. I'm quite inquisitive, so I went over and I spoke to him and asked him why he wasn't marching in, and he basically said that he had to get three buses in today just to be around that environment, and that he hadn't had any contact with anybody in the armed forces for a long time. And it was just really interesting to hear that from him. We sat down with for a coffee. It was really interesting to find out that he was a well forgotten hero. He'd served in World War II, he'd served this country valiantly and he'd been forgotten about and I think that's quite sad. I think if they haven't got anybody around them with a similar age or a similar sort of like experiences or interests then it can be quite lonely. Once you've served in the military, when you leave you become a veteran and you're part of a bigger band of brothers and a term that's often used to describe us is brothers and sisters from different mothers because you've got a common bond that no one else will have and is absolutely unbreakable regardless of what service you were in, it's there all the time. You never lose that friendship, it's always there. I've left the Navy but I've still got my friends and they're there for the life. They might have been out for 10, 12 years, maybe 15 years but they come back and it's like seeing someone like it was last weekend. I joined the army in 1979, which was quite a few years ago. And I joined because my dad was in the army and I wanted to emulate that. There was no jobs going where I was, so it was basically, I joined a military service. My family's military in general. I've been in Germany, you know, Germany take me to working on the uh, farm. When uh, there was an invasion in Normandy, I escaped to France, joined in the army. So I swear I'll be fighting for my country, Poland and England. My friend and I were going to go out. She had been in the bath. She got out of the bath, I got in the bath. And then the sirens went. So I got out of the bath. We, let, we were billeted in a really large house and the bathroom was at the back of the house. And of course, we got out of it and began to make our way to the front. Some of the ceiling, I presume, fell on my head. And I came to on my hands and knees and uh, got to the front room and that where, where our billet was and it just wasn't there. If I'd have been in the room, I would have been killed. And then I must have lost consciousness again because I don't remember being taken out or how we went out or anything about it for a long while afterwards. That's the main memory. Their families have had to live with that price for a lifetime and their descendants live with it now. For someone to commit that act of valor, for someone to put their life on the line and, and give up, for someone to give up their today for our tomorrows, that should never ever be forgotten. The Armed Forces get, is getting better and better at keeping in touch with people who've left and make sure they get the right support that they need. We can't reach everyone. There are a lot of forgotten heroes and there are a lot of unsung heroes who are adjusting back in civilian life but nobody realises what they've done for the country, what they've given up for the country and what they need to deserve from his country as well. He was a regular soldier before the Second World War. He served in Ireland and he served in Malta for the, is it the Spanish Civil War that was on at that time. And then um, he was uh, in Scotland training to go to Italy and he suffered a very bad accident, got his leg hurt. When that was mended, he was sent down to London where I was and that's where I met him. And we married there, yeah. So he's my hero.
It's not one individual, it's a group of people. And that's the people in Bomber Command in the Second World War. Particularly the tail gunners, their chances of survival was less than 5% because invariably they were way back in the aircraft, 30 foot behind the cockpit. If that aircraft went down, their chances of getting out was very, very minimal. 9,000 died during the Battle of Britain. They've only just recently been given a memorial for Bomber Command and they're my forgotten heroes. My friend, they have, you know, the machine gun and the German Spandau shooting because they're shooting straight. When the German had, you know, the gun hot, they must change, you know, top. I rolling over, grab the machine gun from that uh, soldier, bring it to my side and I shooting. I save a lot, you know, people, my friend, otherwise they'd be killed, you know. It's very difficult to forget about that. So always, you know, come into my mind, you know. You often see veterans and think, gosh, they've been through a lot, will that be me? And I hope that from the stories that I've heard from them, that I will have a varied career that they have had. They've got some fantastic stories and you hear it and think, gosh, I wish that was me. And now it's that point where it's kind of like, no, that, that is me. And I am getting those fantastic stories, those fantastic experiences. You see some horrendous sights. Although that person might have passed over, you still treat them with respect. It doesn't matter if it's the enemy or a, a coalition soldier or a civilian. You still look after them, pay them the respects that they deserve. As to the and gore and what have you, you just focus on saving that life and that's what we do. It's a lot of adventure and excitement but with the sacrifices that, and the challenges yeah. that come with it. But it is awesome, and don't get me wrong, like, you know, I know you are away from, from family for, for months on end but when you're out there you, know, you do get a massive rush off doing the job. It is a type of life, it's not just a career, it's a lifestyle and it comes with sacrifices and challenges. You've got to be able to go away from your family and friends for months on end with minimal amounts of contact when you've got to believe that you're doing it for the right reason you've got to get enough enjoyment out of it you have to be someone that will flourish in that kind of environment praise is given to the people that are serving but not a lot is given to those who are supporting them because i think without them really the whole thing falls apart and i don't think they probably don't get the credit that they're due they always want to know what you're doing yeah my dad's been in the service so he knows a bit but you're deployed there's 90 days underneath the water with no fresh air no nothing to them is that little bit of worry to make sure that you're getting back okay the life is hard, the training's tough, the job can be tough, but within the military you have a camaraderie which gets you through. The man beside you, he'd put his life on the line and on, his, on the line for you and you would for him and it's part of that community where people will put their lives on the line for each other and without question. There's definitely a sense of comradeship that goes with being in the forces because whatever the situation, whatever force you're in, you are away with a lot of people who perhaps you don't know very well for a protracted period of time. And so you end up knowing those people particularly well. Family and comradeship is very much a part of it. You make sacrifices every single day, but they should also know that it is a fantastic opportunity. Even someone who is just thinking about it should follow up and go to the Armed Forces Careers Office, find out a bit more information and give it a try. You have to be medically fit, you have to be of a certain attitude. One minute we're doing this nicey nicey, and then the next minute you might be sleeping in the field under the stars, but it's still all enjoyable. There could be a lot more information from the government to portray how the army is. You look at the army adverts, it doesn't really give you a good insight into the army. The comradeship, we've all been to Iraq, Afghanistan, we've all done silly things like Nijmegen marches, which are 100 mile marches over in Holland. I've done things that none of my friends ever have and never will. It gives you fantastic leadership skills, fantastic opportunities that nobody's ever going to get. I've met royal family, I've been abroad with the navy, been abroad with sea cadets as well. It really developed myself as a person and I don't think I'd be the person I am today if I hadn't joined. It looks interesting. You want to join but you don't really know what it's about until you join cadets and you get like a further insight into it really. It makes you more mature because you realise things aren't as simple. You realise you've got to work around stuff. Like with the field craft training not... outside you realise you don't have to rely on everything. Yeah to like... and you got to rely on your friends as well. So you appreciate the other things in life really. When I first joined I remember the stuff that said like always do a good thing on a bad day when no one's watching. I remember all the little things because it does affect the way you behave and show respect and stuff. Well it's teached me discipline and that and it's not thinking about myself and doing something good with your life. Going to good youth if you know what I mean. I personally have been in the Navy for 15 years almost and whilst there's some time lost with some places and family that I'd rather have been the abilities that I've gotten out of it and what I think of myself are a lot better than I think it would have been had I not chosen that route. 
Today I think we're celebrating all members of the three armed forces, regular and reserve for their commitments worldwide to protecting the country and the Queen's assets throughout the world in the last 10 or 15 years. Well, we celebrate everybody here, you know, absolutely every service that is here, it's all for them, all for us, all to show us to the public and say, you know, we're here, we do exist, we're humans just like you, but we do this job and we do it to protect you and for the good of the nation. Celebrating current servicemen that are putting their lives on the line for the country, veterans who have put their lives on the country, and as veterans always do in the military community, you remember the lads that never came back as well. We should never forget our heroes because many a hero they may still be alive, which is great, but many a hero have probably given up their lives to protect and give us the freedom that we've got today. Today has just been amazing to be able to see this much people come out to celebrate Armed Forces Day. Be it veterans, be it their carers, be it their families, be it their friends. Seeing them interact in such a creative way, getting us to experience their stories, hear how amazing they fought for us and all the untold heroes in between. It brings a little bit of wisdom to me, happiness to be able to share in their history and their legacy. And I think it's something that we need to work on, getting the younger generation and the older generation in the same room because only then we can recognize who our forgotten heroes are at the forgotten heroes we are lucky to be able to have this opportunity to capture a glimpse into Leeds history Yeah.